So, I'm going to introduce our guest now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you a man who went to school in Hillbrow. So he is tough. They call themselves St. John's Sister School. But he is a closer man, so he has seen tougher. He is one of the coolest guys to be on a rugby field. Ladies and gentlemen, no big deal. My best mate, Sia Colisi. I am the hooker for the Stormers. Ladies and gentlemen, Skara Dobeni. Ah, Jambu. Yes, Utini, Utini, Tiza. Ah, go, Jambu, Divina. <laughs> Listen, I, I want to be very clear. There, there is a closer bias on this show. You know, I keep telling people, we've given people Nelson Mandela, we gave them Sia Colisi, yeah. and we've given them Skaran Tuben. I don't know what more they want from our nation. <laughs> <laughs> no, Skara, no, how are you, no, brother? No, no. All good, and you? Hey, man, I am good. Listen, lockdown's been tough for us. Let's get straight into it, bro. What have you been up to since your job? Of being like one of the like a demolition man on a rugby field you can't do it right now what are you how are you staying mentally sane right now yeah i think i think it's changed a lot like as the stages have gone like the first 21 days i was like super um driven and all of that with training and all of that and like because like in the stormers team i'm not like the most like driven guy or the most seriously taken guy so I thought, no, I want to prove them wrong. And then I think after a month or a few weeks, like that died. Like I was like, no, I'm done with this. And then um, I got involved with the Friends Charity. And then I, I've been doing a lot of, like for a month, I was doing like a lot of charity work and stuff like that. And then um, I think I've just been now, because I've also like got my own business and I've been focused trying to push a lot of energy into that as well so like i think for me it's been a bit of a roller coaster and like i think a lot of people have been house or homebound i think but i've been pretty busy and i've actually given a lot of attention to things that i haven't really had time for so i think my 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 lockdown has been a bit interesting but yeah i think i'm done with it now i think i'm back to get back on the field even though I just put this this morning and you know, I was uh, I decided now I'm actually fine in lockdown. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about the charity work. Let's hear it. Yeah, so um, uh, there's actually two charities. There's Um Lungilam Chotwana Foundation, and then there's the Be the Difference Foundation. I think like more of my local stuff I've been doing has been with them. Like every day for a month, I was I was working with them. Um, feeding about four to 500 people a day, um, which is quite tough, you know, like, cause like there was like no off days and you had to, you know, you had to pitch to, to feed the people. And then um, I, got, I hurt my ankle running and then I took a bit of a step back and then I was doing a bit of traveling with a friend who, with the Novidam Shodana Foundation, just like more of the, like, forgotten towns sort of vibe like the uh, northern capes Beaufort west king queenstown and some towns in the eastern cape so i was doing a bit of that and then now i'm back home and now like what i said earlier like i'm more focusing on myself a bit and you know trying to do things that i've never been able to do so i think that's where i am now but like I'm, I'm excited um, or I'm keen to like do more where I can or where I'm, where, where I'm allowed, where, where I can give back. Oh, that's awesome, man. Wow. That's, that, that, that is so, that is so cool. That is so, so cool. Vaid, what you got for Skara? No, Vaid, you look so professional with your microphone and everything, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I look like but um, I, kind of helicopter or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you uh, you injured yourself just before lockdown in one of the games. I think it was your shoulder, your pec, or something. How was your your rehab going? And how did you how did you guys cope with not having a physio or a buyer with you in this lockdown time? Yeah, I think for me, I didn't mind because then I didn't have to run, you know, like I had an excuse not to run <laughs> in lockdown. So 
I think I think that was fine for me, but I think like like I have a good relationship with my physios and all of that, and it was like, and I mean, I've I've like been with the guys with the physios for like ten years, and so you obviously get to know and know what you need to do and all of that. So I think it was obviously tough, but like it also wasn't like we weren't chasing a date, you know. So yeah. like it wasn't a big rush for me to get back or to run and all of that. So I think that was what was different to compared to like if like we were playing the shots this weekend or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So it was tough, but I think like I spoke to you a bit as well. I think I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah. it wasn't. It's, yeah, it's been a bit different like now. Like there's no target to anything you're doing. But um, you heard earlier that I fall off my stationary bike. I saw a video of you also falling, doing something. Was it off a ball? Was it off something? Didn't you? Didn't you also have a bit of an accident? Yeah, I think I was. <laughs> I was like just not fooling around, but just like um, trying new things. You know, I mean, if you're home for, I mean, we're not used to being home for like long periods and I think being home I was just trying to create my own sort of drills and all of that and like we were getting like sent like a lot of info and a lot of I think because we've never been in this position before and then I tried to do some uh, I don't know what it was but like some skills throwing and then yeah, I think um because I had, I had done Pilates or worked with a, a physio, TJ Malaba, and she had, we'd been standing on balls for like 20 minutes at a time. So I thought it'd be good to throw a line out balls. And then, yeah, it didn't end well. So <laughs> but then, yeah, quite a <laughs> bit of people saw that. So, yeah, it was pretty funny, oh. but it was pretty sore, but it was a good job. Good luck. So you're the Pilates guy now? <laughs> Hey, All right. Don't hey. wait. So you, what, what? I'm not. I don't, you putting me. It's like you putting me on the on the bracket of the guys who are talking for a PS5. Yeah. That, that's how it feels like. <laughs> hey, let me tell you how it goes. Pilates, vegan, and then you move to China to teach English because you break up with a, a girlfriend. <laughs> that, that's the order that it happens. Next, you're going to be telling us about chakras. You're a Pilates guy now. No, it wasn't that. It was just. I hadn't been in rugby for a while and I was just like in a different space, you know. I, I, almost, I didn't play rugby for almost two years with my snapped Achilles. Yeah. So I, I was doing a lot for, for like just to get back and just like experimenting. Yeah. Yeah, and you got lots of fans. Scott, how is that injury recovery coming along? Because I, I think people have missed you being available on a consistent basis. You're somebody who I know that everybody in Cape Town loves you. Uh, what sort of time window are we looking to seeing the best gutter? Uh, when, when, we, when can you expect to give us the best version of yourself with that Achilles? Is there a window for that? No, I think I think I'm fine now. I think I've worked on myself and I've had a lot of time on myself. And I think now, I think after lockdown, I think I'm going to give myself one more go, you know, and and see how things go. But like, I think I've reached a space where like. I've, I've had that question so many times and I just like I want I, I want that weight off my shoulders like I think I'm I'm mature enough now to like just do me you know in, not impressed but you know but I think like I've reached a space where like now I really want to play rugby and I really want to enjoy myself because, hey brother that's amazing uh, yeah Hey, so that's one thing people don't get um, an eye on, right? Is everybody just sees the number two on your back. Nobody thinks, hey, that's a person. Everybody just thinks, hey, you got a number two. We want to see the best of you. You know, nobody knows the space of being, you guys, you guys are genetic freaks. You, you're gladiators. Tell, talk to me about what's it like when you are an individual that's used to winning and fighting and, and trying to be your best every day. And now you're injured. What, what is that space like for a for a rugby player and, and, and an elite sportsman, which you are? What's it like to be in that eight, nine months on your own doing rehab every day? Mentally, what's that like? I, uh, I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in that. Yeah, I think like what you're talking about, um, us being... Um, but I, I just think... Um, 
we like for me when I was injured, I think the thing that I missed the most was um, um, the actual the people more than the, the playing. But then there's like all the pressures that come with that, you know. Um, if you had been on a on a certain level and um, you've been out for so long, like getting back, I think is more a mental. Like the whole journey is pretty mental in terms of like the work that you have to put in first and the dedication and all of that, but also like the pressures of like, would you be able to perform at the same level that you were on before? And I think um, that's like actually like the tough part, but I think, um, you know, I think what's important um, is the people that are, that are around you, you know, because uh, no matter like, no matter what level you're on, I think that person is also going to like, like people usually look up to people, but those people are also people. So as you as that person now, people are different, but you add up ending, adding more pressure than you see. That is, that is like, so I think that's the tough part. Like being, once you get to a certain space, like I think men, your mental aspect is so hectic. Like a lot of great people that I've spoken to in sporting, like or oh, oh Jean Carlos, no A B. Like you, 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 like when you meet them, they like they're just not the same as like things that we struggle with. It's just like something that they they've already like overcome like mentally mm. and I think like once once people get on that level they, there has to be something special about them you can't be like you are you are a human but you can't be normal and still do things like those people achieve yeah listen I, I'm pulling for you even though I, hey I'm a Lions guy but you're one of the coolest guys ever so I cannot wait to see the I could feel something was weird with you I could feel something was weird with you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were, I thought you I, I you're a good guy, but I could feel something was just missing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're not the first person to say that. You are not the first person to say <laughs> yeah. that. Listen, Scudder, you were talking about, you know, uh, in Kosa they say, and you, you, you spoke mm. about in your struggles, in your tough times and the good times, you need good people around mm. you. Hey, no big deal. Mm. One of your best mates happens to be uh, basically the second coming of Nelson Mandela, Sia Kalisi. What's he like <laughs> as a guy? What's he been like for you in your best and the worst times? And how long have you known him? Um, I, I guess that's the real thing. Is with The first time you met him, did you know, like, hey, that's the guy? Nah, I didn't say. I think uh, I met him, I won't remember the year, but we were 12 years old. I don't know how many years ago that is. But, like, at that time, I think Sia was, like, the laziest rugby player now. Uh, that I'd ever met, and he was like such a cool guy, though, but like the laziest. And like his whole life was like on a different level when I met him. And like him coming from the township, and like 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 English wasn't his vibe. So like compared to him now, you know, he could speak in front of a hundred thousand people, you know. So like I think things that for him has changed, like onto another level um yeah so i can't remember the other part of your question no i just just, just like is he like a cool guy what's he like to be around i mean he, he's got he must have the whole world after him all the time w what's he like what's he like what makes him so great yeah i think like what's nice with him is like he's pretty authentic and he's pretty cool and like once he believes in something like it's done you know what i mean um, like we clash heads on a few things, but like there's some things that I can't even convince him on and I can't even like persuade him on. I think Vodi knows as well. Like there's something like if he believes in it, he's in it. And I think like for many years, like Sia has been, like when you first became captain, it was a bit of a laugh for me because like Sia has always been the clown in the team and all of that. But I think just to see him grow, he's still a clown, but he's like, just to see him grow and to like become like the person he is now, I think is like total opposite of like how he was, let's say 10 years ago or not even 10 years, like a few days. 
um, just to see that maturity and the maturity for the best, you know what I mean? Some people mature and you lose them or some people change and you lose them. Um, but like he's uh, matured and it's like been for the best. So I think that's a difference and it's been a good difference for him. And like, and I'm so like happy, like to see him, um, like use what he has now, or his platform for something good because he's changed a lot of lives and he's changing a lot of lives. And I think that's something for him that's not fake. You know what I mean? You get it. I've, I've like met awesome. a lot of people who do things that are fake, but I think for him it's pretty authentic, especially because of where he comes from. Hey, I just saw you reach for a glass. What are you drinking there? I mean, these are these are tough times. Let's uh, let's take us into it. Are you are you a wine connoisseur? What's your story? I mean, you're hey, you're you're already on your way to being a vegan with the whole Pilates thing. You might as well tell us about your fine wine. Hey, they have brunches every Sunday, don't you? I've never been invited to the brunches, but they have brunches every Sunday where there's uh, wine involved. Oh uh, no, no! I think that was a lockdown thing. And actually, there's a friend of mine who was commenting a few times here, JP. He, um, he's my wine friend, and I think he's twisted my arm a bit. I've been a beer man all my life, but I think now I've turned a bit into a gin and wine guy. But like, I haven't been drinking at all like for a while. I just opened the fridge before we went online, and I felt like I had a long day. And then, yeah, gotta relax. Wednesday, a man's man gotta yeah. relax. All right, all right. Yeah. Hey, Pilat Pilates and fine wine. That's what it is. The guy <laughs> the case on now. Good to know. Hey, so listen. Yeah. Uh, my dad will be happy now. <laughs> Are you and Sia just making TikTok videos with Rachel over there? She's her Instagram game's on fire, like always setting it up. Are you guys Instagram <laughs> TikToking and all? What's the vibe there? What do you guys get up to? No, me and Sia. Or me and Rachel. Yeah, just in general. Or you, Rachel, Sia, the whole family. I mean, are you in the pool? She's always putting people in the pool and the kids. <laughs> what, 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 what do you guys what do you guys get up to Sia Khaleesi? He doesn't seem human right now. He's on a different planet. Yeah, I think um like I think he's balanced it or he's trying to balance it like quite well with what with, like how he's jumped. And I think like 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 anyone um he's also like human and stuff like that so he has his moments where um he wants to just chill and you know usually on a sunday after a game we'd go to langa and just grab some meat before after church you know so i think that's like where we would like get our uh, or not our like i would like get my like we, we would chat and open up and stuff like that um uh, rage i actually don't spend a lot of time with rage i only spend time with rage usually when i'm there like visiting obviously now it's changed with lockdown like playing with the kids or uh, like see us getting ready and we're gonna go somewhere or something but yeah rage i mean i've known rage for close to 10 years now so like i know her quite well but like yeah. we, don't no, spend that's a lot of time to, we don't spend a lot of time together you know what i mean no, cool. I, I, I'm very happy for them. I, listen, I'm, I'm happy for all of you guys. Let's, let's bring it back to the pitch a little bit, Scott. That other guy who plays hooker for you guys, has he, does he eat food? Like I saw that guy without a shirt on. I'm like, what is going on there? He, is he, is he human? Bongi Mbonambi must be the most ripped human being in the world. Is he just intense? Like what is his vibe? Because I love that man and he, he's just hectic. Yeah, no, I think. Um, I've also known Bongi for actually for a long time. When, mm. when I went to Kez for two years, he was at St. Albans. We played against each other and then uh, we played together at SA Schools and then we played against oh, no each big other deal. at the pool. No big deal. SA Schools, <laughs> just throw it up. I'm SA Schools, best hook in the country. No, yeah, no, 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 no. No big deal, just throw it out no, there. No. Keep going, bro. <laughs> Keep going, no big deal. Tony, please help me. Please help me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think you're doing really well all by yourself. You no big deal. About your SH2 <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. And then, like, playing uh, against each other when it was the Bulls and then playing together here. And, like, I think in the beginning it was a bit weird. But I think he's a good man and he's a hard worker. And, yeah, as you said, like, I don't know what he eats. 
I've hardly seen him eat, so um, yeah, maybe it's a secret of his. But yeah, he's a pretty he's solid bloke, and uh, he works hard though. He works hard for what he has, and yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So that you guys have two great yeah. hookers, and you and and, and Bongi and Bonambi there. So. Talk to me about mm. what is the plan for the Stormers uh, and what are you guys aiming for now? There's John Dobson. We had a chat to your coach last night. Is What's, what's the outlook for the Stormers? What, what, do you guys want to be the best in SA? What are your goals as number one? Let's start with you. Tell me your goals as an individual. And then at large, what is the goal for the Stormers over the next two, three years? Yeah, so I think you as in, are you talking about me personally? Yeah, yeah. let's start with, yeah. Let's start with you personally, and then you can tell me about the Stormers. Yeah, I think for me, like lockdown, I wanted to achieve something when I come out of it, you know. And I think like um, this last past few seasons, I just felt that I wasn't in the best shape that I wanted to be in, in terms of weight and in terms of like um, the, the, the the smaller things, in terms of core and hammy and like all these other smaller things that you don't have usually have too much time for and i think i've achieved that now in lockdown and um i feel that i'm i'm, I'm more like a, a full like not package but i feel like I, I i can do what i want now if i wanted to sprint i wouldn't be worried about my hammies or my groins and all that so that's for me personally and i think like with the stormers i think we were we were sort of on a good wicket before our last two games, the Blues and Sharks. I think we'd really like want to, we know what we did wrong and, you know, and that's the, that's the competition. Like there's no room for error like that. But I think like we'd really want to hit the road running again and we'd want to, um, um, be competitive in the competition like when it resumed or if it were to resume. So I think because like one of our main um, objectives was because it was of last year in Cape Town, we wanted to, our, our campaign or our, um, uh, yeah, our campaign for the year was to get Cape Town smiling again. So I think that's why the guys were so driven and really wanted to do well. It's a pity now with all this COVID um, because Newlands has all this history, but I think that was our main objective is just to like get Cape Town smiling again. And that's how we played with so much like passion at Newlands. And like we were so accessible to like the fans because it was there last year as well. It's not only our last year. So we tried to like be accessible, like where we could be approachable and answer questions or they could come watch our trainings. So yeah, I think like. No one expected this, especially us. Like we really wanted this to be like the finale for Newlands and all the history, 135 years. So we really wanted to end well, but yeah, I think we would come back. Everyone wants to end well if we do come back, but yeah, I think that's where we were at. All right, I like that. So like LeBron James' re revenge body, when you come back, look out super rugby. Boy, when he's coming with a LeBron James for a bench body, I love it. Listen, talk to me about John, John Dobson. This was the best Stormers side in, in probably in a very, very long time. I don't want to slate any ex-coaches. I just want to talk about Dobson. What has he brought to you guys? Because you seem to have come out a different, a different side this year. Yeah, I think I also don't want to slate anyone because I think I've enjoyed all my coaches at Stormers with Al Coach Alistair with Flicky and John also. I think I also have a long history with John, like more personal, long history. Um, and I think John is just, um, he's a bit different, like he's a different human, like um, like in terms of uh, his, his player management skills and um, he really cares about the players and um, he's a good human as well. Like he looked after me and Sia actually as well when we were when we were when we first moved to Cape Town. Um, he helped us actually with our furniture and like getting us settled in. And yeah, we I still had his Corey Croft couch, uh, but like oh. he's usually a good person and he's a really good human. And um, I don't know if I can tell you how I got the couch, but. Yeah, I think of Candace. Of course we can. 
<laughs> yeah, please do tell us that. Yeah, no, you can't drop it like that. And listen, now we know the guy's a vegan. He's got a revenge body coming out, and now he's going to tell us a couch story. A vegan, a, great, a vegan. This is a great, <laughs> basically, you said Pilates. I've I've kind of extrapolated how it's going to go. And then he, you were also into fine wine. Tell us about Corycroft. Humble brag there. Tell us about the Corycroft couch. You have to tell us about that. No, I don't have it anymore. But like, yeah, John, obviously, there was a long story, but John ended up in, in where we, me and Sia stayed. And then he saw the state of where we were staying. So he said, no, next week he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna help us with our furniture. So I don't know if he staged a break-in. Oh, he like, wait, but he said, just take whatever you want. I'm going to tell my wife someone broke in and like, <laughs> we took like furniture and curtains and oh, wow. all of that. And, yeah. I hope we didn't claim from insurance, but yeah. <laughs> wow. Breaking news. Hey, this is a big time sports show, right? We're investigative journalism mixed with sport. There's no other show like it. <laughs> oh, that is unbelievable. Listen. <laughs> yeah. So, he's, I mean, he's, oh, he's like, yeah, the long story. He's a special yeah, guy. The, he's a special human, yeah. Listen, before I let you go, this has been an, a, a great chat, bro. Is, is mm. that a wig? Because that hair is awesome. Is it a wig or is that your real hair? Because that hair is awesome, bro. That is such cool hair. Dude, you are one of the coolest guys to be a professional sportsman, by the way. Like you, you just look like a guy I'd want to hang out with. I mean, obviously, you'd never hang out with a loser like me, but I'm just saying, like, if I was cool, you'd be the guy I'd want to hang out with. D let's talk about the hair, and then, Vody, I'll let you in. No, I just, there's no big story behind it. I think it's just, yeah, it's just me. I think it's just become me, and... um and yeah, there's no like real big story. There was a little story, but I don't think it's affected like why I've grown my hair, but I think I, I enjoy it. And yeah, sometimes I doubt myself, like when I wake up um, and oh, you ah, know when you wake up after, after a big night and you have that loser complexion and then you look <laughs> at yourself in the mirror <laughs> and you say uh, like, what am I doing? Keep it, yeah. it's electrified. I you, think, hey, you're playing... You're playing for the Stormers. Anyone judging you, probably like, what, <laughs> hating their marketing job. You're an international sportsman. Uh, hey, you heard of him? Hey, guys, let me tell you who I know. Scott and Domeni. Hey, no big deal. I was the SA School's hooker. I'll throw that in there. Hey, no big deal. My best mate, Sia Khaleesi. And look at my hair. Not a wig. Love it, bro. I love it. I love it. Uh, Scott, are you the, Scott, are you the best. Avodi, what you got? No, no, no. I was just saying that I'm actually mates with him. So imagine how cool I am that he choose he chose to be a friend of mine. <laughs> just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. Hey. Listen, no big deal. Scott, if you can just organize for me, tell Rachel I want to be on her TikTok videos. I've seen the TikTok videos. These are my TikTok moves. Mm. I want to be on there. Mm. Yeah, I want to. I, I want to have okay. a what you call a gift. Listen, now that Sia Colisi, by the way, is with is with Def Jam. Right or not, Jeff Jam? He, 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 rock, rock Nation Sports. Okay. Right? Tell him, tell him. I'll, I'll come. I'll carry his bags. We can hang out at Jay Z. I'll make some TikTok videos in the back. I'll be the guy. Tell him, tell him if he needs somebody. Me and you, me, Sia Kulisi, we go hang out in New York for a bit. Hang out maybe with Beyonce. <laughs> we'll have some vegan food with you. We'll go do some Pilates. Get our chakras aligned. It'll be, it'll be great. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You don't have to answer now. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a public platform. Scott, before I let you go, we've got some questions for you from, from subscribers. What we got for me, Dave? Okay. Coming up now, Sediment TV says, Scott, what is your proudest moment in rugby then in life? So that's two. Proudest moment in rugby and proudest moment in life. Oh, so um, I think, is that JP? Um, I think... <laughs> Proudest moment in rugby, I think, obviously, was to play for the Springboks. I think, like, with the whole history of, like, eventually playing for the Springboks, being involved for, like, a while, um, I think that was a big weight off my shoulders and, like, a dream come true. And then in life, I think, like, having, like, a nephew, you know, 
like I think just to I, I don't have any kids so like just to have someone that I know is like my blood and just to like the bond that we have you know is like proper next level and um I know this guy who asked the question is probably gonna say that and having JP as a friend obviously mm -hmm. is one of the highlights so <laughs> I'll add him in there as well <laughs> that's good that that's why you're a pro sportsman you got to cover all your bases. That's great what you've done there. Great answer, Scott and Uh Mark Larue says, Scott, how difficult is it to crack opponents' line-out codes? Great question. Yeah, I don't think we crack like the line-out codes because you're never sure. Like you can do your analysis and you can see certain like um, rhythms or often a uh things that happen quite often but I think like you sort of sometimes see like their thinking process and you try and sometimes it does become a guessing uh, process but like also I think um, depends on like who is in charge of your lineouts and your contesting and like your mindset it's quite a complex thing like lineouts and contesting so yeah, it's not an easy thing to, 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 to try and crack. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people get it right. A lot of it is guessing and a lot of it is um, structures within your contesting. Mm, all right. There you have it. Jacques Joubert says, Scott, do you agree with Vody that the box will defend their World Cup title? No pressure. Listen, <laughs> maybe your spare key is going to be changed if you don't give the right answer here to see a Colisi's house, but no pressure. That's the question. <laughs> No, I think like um, the box, obviously everyone's giving their best shot every time they're jolling for the box and the coaching staff is like next level, like from what I've been involved with. And I like, it's hard for me to speak because I'm involved and it's hard for me to give an opinion because I'm involved. And yeah, but I think I'd love to um, um, see them defend it. Um, I think obviously they have the, the potential to do it. And um, yeah, I think we have the players, we have the potential, we have the coaching staff. And I just, that's my opinion, you know, but like my opinion can only go so far because I'm, I'm like, I'd love to be more involved there. So like my opinion is very different to if I was from the outside, you know, because I've seen a little bit of it inside. So. Yeah, I don't think I'm the right person to ask oh, that question. I think it's also a tough a, question. You should be you should be a politician. I tell you what, transition straight from here to politics. That is a great answer <laughs> because you've said a lot. You've said a lot, but you didn't say anything. Uh, David Lurie says, "Scotta, where did you get that shirt?" Well, it, it's the shirt, and I think is that a what are you got going there? Is that your mask that's got like that that vibe going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I think. Where did yeah, you get that I mask? I got this. Even you, um, I got it from Loris. Um, I don't know if you know Dane Pete plays Proteus Cricketer. <laughs> oh, hey, no big deal. Just drop that in there. Yeah, yeah. I just no, hey, no, no. The, no. the, the Laureus Sport Awards, SA Schools Hooker, best friend. No, Dane no, Loris. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw Talk him wearing one that. and I asked him because I wanted a oh, washable no. mask because I, I had like a lot of. Yes, so that's how he he got me the mask. Dan P. So you went to Cares, eh? Uh huh. So I mean, I went to Dell. I went to Dell. I went to Dell. I went to Dell College before that, from grade one okay. to grade ten. I did Cares Dale, grade eleven matric. Oh my god. Oh, okay. The yes, red, yes, all right. The, that, the that, red and white that, machine. That. The red and white machine. <laughs> right. Like, red right, and no, black. Right, red, red and black. Red and listen. Right, oh, right, Cares. I'm doing what Cares. Yeah. Oh, you're in big trouble. You are in big trouble. You're in big, and and those are guys are in Hillbra, so you're going to be in big trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, I really appreciate you, brother. And before I let you go, um, I've got mm -hmm. one more question, Scott. What's the worst thing armchair coaches don't understand about the scrum? So you know, loudmouths, talking heads are like me. What don't we really understand is happening in that cauldron? Great question. Yeah, I think like the scrums now is something that's um, adapting quite a lot. Um, it's not like something that you can, I mean, you can be a good, you can be, you can know your scrums, but in, in five years, it's something totally different. 
and the rules are changing now. So I think sometimes you meet some people who maybe who played rugby or who knew rugby and who try and giving you advice, who are trying to give you advice about like like something they experienced or something that they watch or whatever when they were at school or when they played wherever they played but like even in the professional area like rugby the scrums are changing so often and the rules are changing so often so sometimes you have to listen to a lot of people talk about like scrums and stuff but it's become so technical and i think the the refs have like such a tough job because the rules are so finicky and the, you have to interpret it like like something can happen and the ref can give two to make two decisions but both are right just because of the way they interpreted the the rules you know what i mean so yeah it's not just simple anymore so it's i think it's it's quite a complex situation and, and yeah i think i wish there was easier way out of scrums because yeah uh, scrums is not my best <laughs> friend and i'm in the mix yeah. of it quite often so, yeah so i think I, I, yeah I, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that is tough. That is that is super tough. So, Vody, what you got for Scudder before we let him go? Dude, you have been amazing. You've given us so much time, and I, I know no. you're busy. No worries. No, no worries. No, you guys are pretty cool. <laughs> no, Scudder, thank you so much for being on here, and thank you so much for being such a cool friend and an inspiration, and for all the hard work that you're doing on and off the field. I think people need to realize that it's not just the 80 minutes on the field is what it is, but it's all that hard work off the field that's the... Uh, that takes the toll. Yeah, thanks, my friend. No, I think, and thank you too, like, for the invite. Now, Dumbo, thank you guys for having me. Um, Absolute yeah, I know pleasure. You have it. Like, this doesn't happen overnight as well. So, uh, yeah. big Listen, up to you I, guys. I wanna... Hard work. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, some of the charity work. How can people get involved? How can they help? Maybe you can just give us a, a website people can go to uh, and donate. Is there, is there any way to do that? Maybe you can give us those details. Yeah, I think both both churches that I'm busy with, um, they both have Facebook pages and they both can, you can donate. Um, the one is the Lungi Lem Chotwana Foundation and the one is Be The Difference um, Foundation and both of them are easily accessible. All the info is on Facebook and, you know, so it's pretty easy and, yeah, I think... If you have any problems, you can DM them. They're very, like, they have people that are running those platforms, so it's pretty easy. And, yeah. All right. Be the Difference is also on Instagram, so it's easy. You can DM them, and, yeah, it's they're pretty easy to get Excellent. Mm. Duveni, the most electrifying hair in sport today. Also awesome personality. <laughs> also best friends with Sia Khaleesi. Also oh. all-time cool guy. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Ascara, you are you are so cool, bro. Because a lot of people, when they have the type of access to cool stuff that they have, is they they can get a bit big headed. They can, you, you know, fans want to feel connected. And I think the Stormers are very lucky to have a figure like you, where people feel connected to you. The city feels connected to you. You're a part. You're a part of the fabric of the society. And I think we see that happening less and less in all sports. So whatever whatever it is you got going, brother. I admire it because you've done an incredible amount. You've done more than most of us will ever achieve in life. You've been an international sportsman, but you've stayed this cool guy. Whatever it is that you're doing, brother, keep doing it because it's awesome. It's awesome. I'm genuinely, I want to tell you, I'm a huge fan. I support everything you do, and I cannot wait to have you back. Uh, thank you. you know, thank you so much for that. I think Cape Town's also been kind to me, and they've always... Yeah, they've always had me in their corner. So, so yeah, really enjoyed my trip, my my time here, and yeah, hopefully it doesn't come to an end soon. But now, Gule Lamnaputi, and thank you for those kind words, and thank you for having me on the show as well.